Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good day. My name is Puan Nurfahana binti Alias. Welcome to DUW10012 Occupational Safety and Health. Today our topic for chapter 5 is fire safety. For course learning outcome, students should be able to CLO1 explain briefly occupational safety and health OSH procedures regulation and its compliance in Malaysia CLO2 initiates incident hazards risk and safe work practices in order to maintain health and safe work environment for course syllabus show the basic of fire the concept of fire triangle and the classes of fire explain fire safety planning fire safety plan fire control method and fire protection method demonstrate escape route emergency evacuation plan and assembly point introduction for fire safety Fire safety is one of the most common emergency preparedness plans implemented. A fire is deadly emergency and has the capability to turn into a major disaster. Fire is explained based on the three main elements needed to ignite a fire. The classification of the types of fire determines the type of extinguishing material to be used. Fire safety planning includes fire safety preparation, active and passive fire prevention are also discussed. The basic of fire, concept of fire triangle. A fire is defined as a chemical reaction due to rapid oxidation or burning of a fuel. It needs three elements to occur. Fuel any combustible material such as petrol, methanol, pepper or wood, oxygen, at least 16% oxygen is needed to sustain a fire, heat, the energy necessary to increase fuel temperature to ignition point. The chain reaction of a fire occurs when fuel Oxygen and heat are present in proper conditions and proportions as shown in the fire triangle model. The fire triangle, three elements to produce a fire, oxygen, heat and fuel. If any of these elements is missing, the fire will not start. If any of them is removed when a fire has started, the fire will be extinguished. This relationship is called the fire pyramid of fire triangle. Thus, the practical emphasis on preventing a fire outbreak is by prohibiting the formation of the fire triangle. Heat or ignition. Sources of heat ignition. Naked flames. Example, smoking materials, external sparks, example, welding, grinding metal, internal sparking, example, electrical equipment, hot surfaces, example, lighting, cooking, heating appliances, static electricity, example, pouring highly flammable liquids. Fuel, sources of fuel, solids, example, wood, paper, cardboard, plastic, rubber, foam, textiles, hair, liquids, example, paint, varnish, thinners, petrol, white spread, paraffin, gases, example, flammable gases including LPG, acetylene and hydrogen. Oxygen, sources of oxygen provided by the air all around us, cylinders providing oxygen for medical purposes or welding, 
some chemicals such as nitrates, chlorates, chromates and peroxides can release oxygen as they burn. The classes of fire Classes of fires A Types of fires Wood, pepper, clothes, trash and other ordinary materials Classes of fires B Types of fires Gasoline, oil, paint and other flammable liquids Classes of fires C Types of fires may be used on fires involving live electrical equipment without danger to the operator. Classes of fires D. Types of fires Combustible metals and combustible metal alloys. Classes of fires K. Types of fires Cooking media such as vegetable or animal oils and fats. Table 5.1.2 The classes of fire shows at a quick glance the different types of fire extinguishers and the classes of fires which they can and cannot be used on. Fire extinguisher ratings are shown on the extinguisher face plate. Some extinguishers are marked with multiple ratings. These extinguishers are capable of putting out more than one class of fire. Different regions have their own fire coding, so it is important to keep this in mind besides remembering to check the ratings of the fire extinguisher before using it. To prevent fires for Class A, Ordinary Combustibles Keep storage and working areas free of trash. Place oily racks in covered containers. Class B, flammable liquids or gases. Don't refuel gasoline-powered equipment in a confined space in the presence of an open flame or while the equipment is hot. Keep flammable liquids stored in a tightly closed container and away from spark producing sources. Use flammable liquids only in well ventilated areas. Class C Electrical Equipment Never install a fuse rated higher than specified for the circuit. Investigate any appliance or electrical equipment that smells strange. Unusual odors can be the first sign of a potential fire. Utility lights should always have some type of wire guard over them. Class D. Flammable Metals Knowledge of the properties of the metals and using good judgment and common sense will assist you in controlling or avoiding potential fires or reactions. Fire Safety Planning Fire Safety Plan Once the fire safety management strategy is set up, the organization can then work towards implementing it in the workplace. Training and fire drills should be carried out regularly. Auditing and continual improvement should be conducted based on feedback from staff. The following are 8 steps for implementing a fire safety program. Step 1. Develop a statement of intent. Step 2. Develop a fire safety task force committee. Step 3. Assess all fire hazards, materials, procedures, building design. Step 4. Identify fire hazard controls. Step 5. Develop safety procedures for fire hazard control. Step 6. Develop a fire emergency exit and evacuation plan. Step 7. Training fire drill. And step 8. Evaluation audit report. 
Fire Protection and Control Methods Fire protection for a building comes in two specific forms, active and passive systems. Active Fire Protection Systems Active systems are in the form of alarm suppression, extinguishers, sprinklers and extract ventilation depending on the operation of a mechanical device. The overall aim of an active system is to extinguish the fire by detecting the fire early and evacuating the building, alerting emergency services at an early stage of the fire, controlling the movement of smoke and fire, and suppressing and or starving the fire of oxygen and fuel. Passive Fire Protection Systems Passive systems are in the form of fire-rated doors, barriers, ceilings and structural fire protection and do not rely on the operation of any form of mechanical device. The overall aim of a passive system is to contain the fire by using fire-rated partitions and doors to prevent the fire and smoke from spreading from one compartment to another and delaying the collapse of the building structure by delaying the growth of the fire. These are the examples of active fire protection systems equipments and passive fire protection systems of structural fire protection. Escape route For emergency evacuation plan, be prepared for a fire emergency. Check the location of fire alarms and know how they work. Learn your building evacuation plan. Know where your two nearest exits are located. Learn how door swing and where stairs lead. Make sure nothing blocks fire pools, extinguishers and emergency exits. Learn the sound of your building fire alarm. Post emergency numbers including security and first aid near your telephone. Make sure you know what to do if the fire alarm sounds. Plan your escape. When you notice a fire, pull the nearest fire alarm pull station while exiting the floor. If there is no pull station, dial 999 emergency number or alternate emergency number. Do not assume that anyone else had already called the fire department. Stay calm and be prepared to answer the operator's questions regarding the emergency. Evacuate. When you hear the fire alarm, leave at once taking direction from the emergency warden. Do not delay yourself by gathering personal items. Your safety always comes first. Before you open any door, fill the door with the back of your hand. If the door is cold, slowly open it a crack. If there is no smoke in hallways or stairwells, follow your building's evacuation plan. Get out quickly using designated fire exit. Close doors behind you, however, do not lock the door. Locking the door hinders the fire department search and rescue efforts. The stairway will be your primary escape route. Never, never use elevators under any circumstances. 
Once in the stairway, proceed down to the first floor and out of the building. Never go up. If you are trapped in smoke or heat, before you open any door, fill the door with the back of your hand. If the door is warm to the touch, do not attempt to open the door. Stuff the cracks around doors with towels, rags, clothing or tape and cover vents to keep out smoke. Stay low to the floor and if possible, cover your mouth and nose with a damp cloth or dust mask to help you breathe. If there is a phone in the room where you are trapped, call the fire department to tell them exactly where you are located. Do this even if you see fire apparatus on the street below. Wait at a window and signal for help. Do not panic or jump. Wait. If possible, open the window at the top or bottom, but do not break it. You may need to close the window if smoke rushes in. Be patient. Rescuing all the occupants of a building can take several hours. After a fire emergency, once you are out of the building, stay out. Do not go back inside for any reason. Report to your warden for roll call at your designated assembly point. Tell the fire department via your warden if you know of anyone trapped inside the building. Only re-enter if and when the fire department tells you it is safe to do so. Assembly Point Under Malaysian law, the Uniform Building Bylaws 1984 and the Fire Services Act 1988, also known as Act 341, states the regulations and law for the fire building safety and emergency exits in order to ensure the safety of all building tenants, occupants, visitors and workers. An emergency assembly point is an extension of an emergency escape plan from a building which keeps people who are in an emergency from further harm. This emergency assembly point is a safe, open space located outside the building that is spacious enough to accommodate the total number of tenants or occupants, visitors and workers of the building during emergencies or disasters. At this assembly point, a roll call is always done to determine head count and to ensure that no one is left in the building. The following are five basic ways to determine an appropriate emergency assembly point. First, space and access. As mentioned, the emergency assembly point should be reachable or easily reached from the building. This area should be an open space that is spacious enough to accommodate all occupants at a given time. The escape route from the building to the assembly point should also be well lit and include signposts. Additionally, any traffic and obstruction towards the escape route from the emergency exit of the building to the assembly point should be as minimal as possible. Second, distance. The distance of the emergency assembly point from the building should be more than the height of the building. This is an added safety precaution in case the whole building collapses due to a fire or a disaster. Third, location. The emergency assembly point should not obstruct traffic or emergency services that are trying to perform a rescue. Car parks are usually reserved for the authorities and those providing rescue services. 
thus are normally off limits during an emergency. Fourth, mobility of the occupants. It is important to consider the type of people to be evacuated. For example, disabled occupants or workers with mobility issues. During an emergency, their capabilities when expected to travel and how they will gain access to the emergency assembly point. Fifth, backup area. It is paramount to have a backup assembly point in the event that the main emergency assembly point is not available during a certain situation. Once the emergency assembly point has been chosen, the building tenants or occupants, visitors and workers, among others, must be provided with adequate information, instruction and training on how to react during an emergency. A safety briefing could be given to all visitors to the premise. As a conclusion, a fire requires fuel, heat and oxygen. In order to extinguish a fire, one of the elements must be taken away. Knowing the class of fire is important to identify the correct fire extinguisher to control the fire. If the wrong medium is used, the fire might not be contained. Emergency and fire safety planning includes a fire emergency planning strategy, fire protection and fire hazard control. Thank you for watching and see you in the next input lecture. Bye.